CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com and welcome to The Journey is Real. We talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Today my guest is Sean Weinstein. He's going to be talking about how he uses fiction to combat climate change. Thank you for coming on today, Sean. Oh, you're welcome. No, uh, <laughs> this, 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 this is thrilling. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Um, climate change in and of itself is kind of an interesting topic. Um, can you share a little bit as to how that came about to be your passion? Okay, well, I started a long time ago. I, w I was probably about eight or nine, ten years old. Uh, I was always interested in science. I uh, had a science journal that my one of my, my elementary school teachers uh, got for me. Mm -hmm. And in that, there were articles by Roger Revelle, who is the or was the professor of Al Gore. So, and he was writing about climate change. Um, so from probably less than 10 years old, I, I was reading about it. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a little bit scary. Um, and it sort of like was in the back of my mind for, for years and years and years from, from probably 10 years old on. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, over the years, uh, being interested in science, being interested in, uh, I, I, I always been sort of science involved. Um, I got into uh, like reading Jim Hansen, reading, reading about what's happening with, with climate change. And it, it's something that when I uh, wanted to write a new novel, I told myself I need to, I should be doing, I should be using my talents, whatever skills I've got mm -hmm. to fight climate change. Cause, cause Hey, it, it might very well destroy all life on earth. And, and, and if I can do anything at all to possibly fix the situation, I'll do it. Right, being an author, we learn from the author's perspective, it's perspective. It's a lot easier to write what you know, and it's a lot easier to write what your core is. I'm a Christian fiction author. So everything that I write has a Christian twist to it. So everything that you write is gonna have like a science twist to it, correct? Pretty much so, yes, I think so. Well, there's also politics. I, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, mm -hmm. uh, so it's hard to avoid politics, and then climate change is very That's much a problem. right in your face. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. So, so how are you using it to, like, affect climate change? Like, how are you using it in your books? Okay, well, my, the, the novel that I'm, I'm just trying to finishing up is set in a world that has, uh, it's post-apocalyptic, essentially. The um, civilization has crashed, mm -hmm. mostly because of uh, the migration, the climate refugee problem, that, that you've got refugees in America who are coming into cities from, from Miami, from, from the coastlines, from the drought areas. They're coming into cities like Lincoln, Nebraska, which has absolutely no climate problems. And they're looking for jobs, they're looking for food, they're looking for water, they're looking for, for a place to live. Eventually, Lincoln, Nebraska runs out of room, runs out of food, runs out of water. And, and Lincoln, Nebraska, and, and the people who are coming from, from Florida, they're Americans, they'll have guns. And eventually, the entire civilization collapses. Um, so that, that's where my novel starts, is, is civilization has collapsed. Uh, I've got, it's the story of a family who is living in a satellite, uh, not even a satellite, or a, or a rocket launching station in oh. Alaska. They are launching rockets to try and save the planet. The, the, the grandfather of the family is a rocket scientist. The uh, mother of the family is a biological scientist. Um, they sort of combining their skills to, to, to save the planet. Mm -hmm. but they're now out of rockets. Uh, the kids are now um, in their teens and they've never seen other kids. So the, the story is about the family moving actually to an Antarctica where they'll find more their own family that happens to, to be settling, um, selling a colony in, 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 in Antarctica. And that's really what the story is about. Well, that's interesting. So you kind of take it from the perspective of rebuilding civilization in this one colony? Yes. Um, 
So, well, the story is, is they're getting there, but it's also once they get there, it's what the mother of the family really wants for her kids. She wants to be a grandmother. She wants her kids to, to meet other kids, to, to have romance, to have, have a life. And it ends with a romance of, of her son uh, with uh, actually a, a Somebody tell the end. Don't tell the end. Actually, that's true. I shouldn't tell the end. Good, good tell the end. Well, that's kind so of it, it ends very right optimistic. It, it, it ends with rebuilding. It ends with with uh, a romance that's successful. It ends very, very happy. Good. I like happy endings. So, but basically, you kind of target the fact that the climate change has affected the world in a, an extremely bad way, and. Yeah what that does to civilization as a whole. Yes. So um, I've got, well, my, my goal was to have my readers fall in love with my characters. That's, I consider myself a character novelist. Um, and and there, you, you're, you, the journey is real, where my journey comes from. Um, I was probably seven years old when I first started writing fiction. Uh, and I, I sort of been, my, my, my dad was, was a fiction writer. Uh, I'm not, not published, not, not, but, but he, he, that was his, his dream. So I've sort of had that dream ever since I was about seven. So um, I consider myself a character novelist. I, I love people. I, 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 mean, I, I mean that as, as, as people, but I also love characters. I love, I love analyzing characters. I love creating characters. So what I'm trying to do is have, create characters that my readers fall in love with. Mm -hmm. that, uh, with his family, it's, it's the daughter uh, and the son um, who are just, the son, I grew up reading science fiction actually, and science fiction has characters who are in, in what I grew up with, young men who are just very capable, that, that they meet aliens and somehow or other, because they're so brilliant, they manage to, to conquer the aliens or become friends with the aliens or whatever. So my family, my, uh, it's, it's, hey, the, the grandfather's a, a, a rocket scientist and, and, and the mother is, is a, a biologist. The son of, is really the star of the novel. And he is one of these characters that just um, is brilliant, is lovable, is, has a great sense of humor. Um, and, and it's, it's his story. And I, what I'm trying to do is get the, the readers to just fall in love with him and fall in love with his sister. Um, so that seeing what they grow through, the tortures they go through, trying to see what's happening in the world and, and, and how the world has collapsed and, and, and finally coming to a, a colony that, that's rebuilding, uh, so, so the whole point of what I'm trying to do is get my readers to, to see what is going or what, what might very well happen by, by identifying with characters that they're reading. And, 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 and I'm sort of psyched today because a friend of mine um, who's actually, uh, because he's an ex-con, he's not allowed to have a uh, computer. So he actually had a hard copy of my novel. Mm -hmm. And he returned it to me today with a note on the top of it saying, this is an awesome story. Oh, this nice. That's yeah. always good. Right. So that's really what I'm trying to do is, is to get people to say, hey, I really like reading this and, and wanted to pass it off to their friends. And, and, mm -hmm. and in reading it, understanding what's going on with the climate, understanding what's happening. Okay. Now you mentioned that... Um, when you first started studying climate change that it scared you, what about it scared you? I mean, for those who aren't, I mean, a lot of us are pretty much familiar with this, it's kind of in your face, but what exactly about it, if you could kind of nutshell it for those who aren't overly familiar with it? Okay, so again, as a young kid, um, reading Isaac Asimov, who was reading James Hansen, um, James Hansen is, is the number one climate scientist in the world today. Um, he started out studying Venus. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, Venus effect was something. Venus effect is a planet that, thanks to having too much carbon, ends up, carbon in the atmosphere, ends up getting really, really hot. And Venus is now like 1,000 degrees. It, it's 
higher than oven temperature and there's no life possible on Venus. What James Hansen was saying uh, and other scientists like, like uh, uh, Roger Ravel, um, hey, Earth can get there. And we could, we, it's possible that, that the Earth will become an oven and there'll be no life at all. If that happens, <laughs> that, that, that to me is scary. That, that's very scary. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the movies, but it's usually the flip side. They go into freeze as opposed to heat. Yeah, that, that's interesting, too, because back in the, when I was a kid, uh, in the 60s, 70s, whatever, um, they were talking about going into, into a freeze. Mm -hmm. But um, that was sort of not quite scientific. It was more, um, hey, it became a movie, became, uh, so, so it was never really real. Mm -hmm. uh, the real science of it is, uh, and we've, we've known about climate change um, probably since about uh, 1905, 1910. Um, if I can uh, grab, uh, there was like a woman Eunice Foote in 1856 and John Tyndall in 1859, um, who their test, and, and Eunice Foote did it first, John Tyndall got famous because of it, because he, he happened to be the man. Uh, she was four years earlier and had a better, better version. Of course. <laughs> well, what they had was a tube that, with a thermometer on one end, and a, a place you can open and put in gas on the other, and then send in light. And then they measured, with different substances in that tube, what the temperature was. Mm -hmm. And they found with carbon dioxide, temperature went up. With general oxygen no it didn't uh so it was 1856 uh with with uh what's her foot um forgive me for, for not remembering her eunice eunice foot um they 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 knew pretty much from then on that having more and more co2 in the air was going to make the world hotter yeah, I guess I'm more into noticing like the polar shifts, uh, yeah. and for example, the um, massive volcano that I think is in Yellowstone. Is that where it's at? It's, yeah. So if that type stuff blows, it's going to make like wreak havoc everywhere. It's going to yeah. make Mount St. Helens look like a kiddie pool, is my <laughs> understanding, basically. Right, and and it could. So that's. The interesting too in that volcanism has under paleontology affected uh the climate in the past we've had this is where we're uh going into the sixth extinction event the worst extent the great extinction which was permian triassic about 256 million years ago um was caused by uh volcanoes mm -hmm. in siberia that it was volcanism caused by the movement of the plates that, that make up the earth. And so there were like zillions of, of volcanoes and that was putting carbon into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That carbon heated up the atmosphere. Um, we had more CO2 then than we have now. 97% um, of all life on Earth uh, of all life on, on actually 97 percent of all life in the oceans died something about 90 to 94 percent of all life in um, land died mm -hmm. and the only land the only life that survived was in like the the, the poles mm -hmm. this was like 256 million years ago so it all came back and, and everything was fine but that's the fear that's that's uh, so um, in in some of my journey from uh, in trying to 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 do everything I could possibly can to to fight climate change, I one of the people I, I've been connecting with scientists everywhere. One of them is a woman named Gerda Keller, who is a paleontologist out, out actually in Princeton, um, who just. I spent, I, I, she had me read her, her scientific journals and I named a character after her. She, she's, she's essentially a character in my book. Oh, cool. So, so, so that's where I've, I've been learning. 
my, I, I, in trying to, to, to come up with this novel and, and to my goal of saving the planet really with my, with this novel, I mean, I've connected with, with, uh, probably 21,000 people on, on LinkedIn. Most of those are climate scientists, climate activists. Uh, I, I've talked to a lot of them. I've, I've, I've read like 85 books in, in the climate arena. Um, I've, I've tried to educate myself. I've, I've even lost a lot of weight and tried to get myself as healthy as possible, exercising like mad. Because I'm psyched. I'm, I'm, I, I want to uh, make my, 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 do what I can to save the world. Now, you do also have a blog called Morning Dove, correct? Yes, that's the name of my novel. Can you explain what that is for those of you? So, uh, in my carport, I need to tell the story of the morning dove. Um, one day, my wife has uh, terracotta pots. Mm -hmm. have a, and the carport has a window from the house into the carport. And there's a uh, brick shelf that my wife had flowers on, terracotta pots. One day I see the terracotta pots on the ground and I put, I like try and put them back. She's going to blame me. So um, <laughs> the, the, the next day, one of them's on the ground. One of them, there looks like there's like twigs. Turns out a bird built a nest in that pot. Oh. Um, the uh, first year, uh, it turned out it was a morning dove because I ended up looking them up. I took photos and, and, and they went to Google. And, um, they had uh, two babies and, and they all flew off. Everything was wonderful. The next year, they're back. Same nest, same, same birds. Huh. And my neighbor on this side, uh, so my right side, of the, for, for people that aren't seeing, my left side is the carport, my right side is my neighbor. I was looking out my window to the neighbor on the right side, and there was a, the, he had, he doesn't anymore, but he, he has a different cat. He had an ancient, big, fat cat that was like, oh no, how, how old cats could possibly be. Yeah. Uh, this and, isn't going to end well, is it? No. So, so the uh, cat, one day, uh, I'm watching, the cat is in, an, underneath a bush, pounces as fast as I've ever seen a cat move, faster than I've ever seen a move before, grab something, goes back under the, under the bush. And from that point, from next 18 hours, the male morning dove, rather than sitting on the nest with two eggs in it, he stood, sat probably about a foot away. And for, for the next 18 hours, the morning dove, uh, was making a, a, the, the sound of the morning dove, which is coo, curry, coo, coo, coo. Mm -hmm. He did that. And I, I was going up to him and saying, hey, because uh, we became friends pretty much. He, he'd allow us to, to get pretty close. And I was saying, look, if you were to sit on those eggs, they'd probably hatch. They're, they're almost ready to hatch. He, he didn't pay any attention to me. Uh, after 18 hours, he flew away. The eggs essentially disintegrated. A year later, he was back and spent four hours, this time, a year later, right next, standing in the exact same place, right next to the nest. We never touched it because it was like too, too depressing to touch it. And he did the same coo 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 as loud as he possibly could. So my, I use that scene in my novel. Mm -hmm. I have the grandfather actually telling uh, the, the grandchildren and, and his son this story to get the father to take care of his, his, his children and get them off to, to Antarctica. Gotcha. So that's sort of how the, how the story starts. And the morning dove, um, the daughter actually pretends to be a morning dove uh, to, to help convince the father. So she really is the, the, the morning dove of the novel. Well, that's cool. So in your blog, what do you do? What, what areas do you touch about basically climate change or? Yeah, so, so it's mostly about climate change, but what I try to do on the blog is to be upbeat. So I've got one of my blog entries is climate jokes. Um, 
one of my blog entries is a play in which I've got, and so it's like a two or three page play where I've got um, a uh, um, climate scientist, I've got a writer, and I've got Average Joe, and the uh, the the writer is trying to tell Average Joe, hey, um, you can you can keep your your big gas guzzler, but instead of being a gas guzzler, it should be a Tesla. Uh, or electric car. I didn't. I don't, I don't think. I don't think I use the word Tesla, but but that just the name just comes to me at the moment. So uh, you kind of put a, a spin on it to kind yeah, of show the difference it, between it, the... to make it funny, right? I'm I'm trying to make things funny. I'm trying to make things light, but with as being as convincing as possible as to hey, uh, this is this is something we all need to care about. This is also something we all need to do, um, but it doesn't have to be painful. We we can do it in in. In, in a way that, that we don't have to struggle. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of my point is that we don't have to raise our, our thermostats. Uh, we don't have to give up our gas guzzlers. Um, and we can still fix climate change if, if we care, if we do things about it, if we, if we work at it, um, if we convince people as, as I'm trying to do by writing a novel. Gotcha. Okay, so those who are looking for you online, how do they find you? Okay, uh, well, my website is www.seanweinstein.com and I spell Sean Weinstein, S-H-A-W-N-O-U-E-I-N-S-T-E-E-N.com. And the, one of uh, the, my thoughts with spelling my name that way is sort of the, the French way, uh, starting with a we, like, like the French yes. So that that's, so that's the way to think about it. It is o u e i n s t e e n dot com. That that's Sean Weinstein. Gotcha. Well, we have a few more minutes left. Um, we have about three more minutes. Is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I have to add my blog because um, my blog is really where I've got uh, most of my what I'm trying to do to to, to convince people to, to fight climate change, and it's also where I'm I, I discuss my novel most. So it's um, Morning Dove. Um, morningdovenovel.blogspot.com uh, is, is the URL. Um, it, it's you spell that out real quick. Right, M O U R N I N G. It's the, the birds are morning. That's a, that's the coo cree coo 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 sound. It sounds like morning. M O U R N I N G D O V E N O V E L dot blogspot b l o g s p o t dot com. Okay, and when your book comes out, where can they find that? Will they find information on your website from that? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, words inspire the revolution. Who knows what your yeah. words may do? They may inspire somebody to yeah, more of an interest in climate change and yeah. what it's doing to hurt our world. Yeah, no, I was inspired by um, Abraham Lincoln's comment to Harry Beecher Stowe. So you're the little lady that started this great war. That's the power of an novel. <laughs> So, there so you go. That, that, that's that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to do what Harriet Beecher Stowe did to end slavery. I'm trying to to do the same thing to to save the planet from climate change. There you go. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for coming on today. We really appreciate you, and we really appreciate your insight. Looking forward to that book coming out. I'm kind of curious to see what it is as well. I'm kind of a sci-fi buff, so yeah. that's kind of right up my alley. All right. Good um, to hear. For those listening, again, you can find them at www.shawnouenstee.com. And thank you guys for watching The Journey is Real today. I'm CJ Peterson with cjpetersonwrites.com. And The Journey is Real is where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Until next time.